happy Wednesday and welcome to episode 9 of Kintsugi Talks Podcast. My name is Soroya and today we are going to be discussing the topic of healing, what it is and what it looks like. Before we get into the episode, I want to make sure that everyone who is listening to me right now is actually following me and is subscribed to get notifications every time I post a new episode. You can listen to Kintsugi Talks Podcast on Anchor, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and Google Podcasts. And you could also follow me on Instagram at Kintsugi Talks Pod, that is K-I-N-T. S-U-G-I Talks Pod. That is all lowercase letters and all pushed together, no spaces in between on Instagram. Oh, without further Now, you already know, before we start with this episode, we're going to give a definition of what the word heal or healing is. I'll actually give the definition for both the word heal and healing. So, the word healing is a noun. This is the, the dictionary definition. Now, the word healing is a noun, and it means the process of making or becoming sound or healthy again. Now, as an adjective, it means tending to heal and is therapeutic. Now, for the word heal, it's a verb. And it means of a person or treatment cause a wound, injury, or person to become sound or healthy again. And it also means to become correct or to put right or to alleviate a person's distress or anguish and now I looked up the word also in Hebrew what the Hebrew word for heal is because in the Bible for those that don't know the original language of the Bible was actually Hebrew and then it was translated into Greek and nowadays you can read the Bible in every other language but I wanted to stick to the original language which was Hebrew Now, the word for healing in Hebrew is rafa, which is R-A-P-H-A. And when I looked it up, it showed like different phrases of how the word heal or healing pops up in the Bible when it's used. So the first one is to become fresh. The second one is completely healed. The third one is purified. And the fourth one is repaired. Now, I can say for me that when it comes to healing, um, in my process of healing from certain things, I have become desensitized to a lot of things. Now, desensitization is a psychological process by which a response is repeatedly elicited in situations where the action tendency that arises out of the emotion proves to be irrelevant this pretty much means that in certain situations where I should have a reaction I don't have a reaction and can be very insensitive to it so pretty much I've been through a lot of things that have kind of repeatedly happened to me over and over again and had have gone through things like back to back to back to where I just get to a point where it's just like okay all right this is what this is and obviously with that there's a lot of hurt that is deeply inside that I gotta one acknowledge two accept it and three come up with the proper uh, methods of how to release that hurt now, I did mention this in my um, in my last episode where I talked about going through just a process in general, that there's no such thing as an easy process. And when it comes to healing, it's not easy. And nothing about healing is supposed to be easy or supposed to be pretty. 
I'm going to say that again. Nothing about healing is supposed to be easy or pretty. Like, I don't want anyone to have this mis- misconstrued notion that it's like a like a simple, like three-step, five-step thing that's going to happen within like 24 hours. No. Like, there were things that I had to heal from that took me years. Years. Not like weeks, months, years. And it was a lot of hard work and it was painful. It got ugly. There was a lot of tears. I'm in therapy for a lot of that stuff now. So that is a part of my healing process through therapy. But there's nothing easy about it. And I want to be the one, and hopefully there's other people out there who are saying that that is like, yes, this process is easy and yes, it is hard, but it is worth it and beneficial for you because I know for me, I'll be damned if I don't get to make it to heaven because I held a grudge in my heart over someone something did to me, whether they already apologized for it or didn't. I'm going to say that again. I'll be damned if I don't get to go to heaven because I'm holding a grudge in my heart against someone or something and they whether they apologize for it or didn't own up to it and apologize for it. That is why it is important that everyone needs to have their healing journey. It's going to happen one way or the other, but everyone needs to embark and embrace what is to come on the healing journey. Have I been able to heal from certain things that I've been through? Yes. Do I still have a long ways to go for some other things that I have to heal from? Absolutely. Because I am human. Now, what I want to share with you is what I've learned and things that I still have to learn. And hopefully you guys can relate to any of this stuff. And a question that I would like to know from you guys is what does or did healing look like for you? And that's the question that I'll put for um, the Spotify question. What does slash did healing look like for you? Because I would love to hear your guys' stories because I believe that everyone's story and testimony is very powerful when it comes to this. So I'm gonna get on to sharing. Number one, I have to do it for myself because like I said before, I'll be damned if I don't make it to heaven because I have this grudge in my heart against someone who not even because they did apologize for it and they asked for forgiveness, but because they're, they weren't willing to change their behavior, don't see the error in their behavior and haven't apologized for it, haven't given me an I'm sorry. I cannot, we I'm going to say this for all of us. We cannot let the arrogance and unwillingness for people to change their ways for to get in the way of our healing. We can't let that happen. We cannot let that happen. Because the, that person who is unwilling to change their ways, guess what? They're going to keep on living their life until God finally stops them, stops them in their tracks. However, that may happen whenever that may be to be like, yo, you need to get your, get your crap together. And again, we can't let that stop us from our healing, from us to become whole again. You know, I, I can't let that happen. Because I've come too far in my walk with God, in my life, in the trials and tribulations that I've been through to let something like bitterness and anger and envy because the person is living their best life and I'm still here because of what they did, even though I know they're not willing to change. I can't do that to myself. I just, I I can't. And I hope that for everyone that listens to this, that they, that you do not allow yourself to go through that too, because at the end of the day, that's not hurting that person. It's hurting yourself. 
Number two, I'm going to be broken repeatedly to become whole. I'm going to say that again. I'm going to be broken repeatedly to become whole. Now, this ties into the purpose of why I called my podcast Kintsugi. For those that have been with me since the beginning, you will know why I called it Kintsugi, but I will explain to those who are new listeners. Kintsugi is a Japanese form of art where they will take um, any type of broken pottery, whether it be a plate, a vase, um, a bowl, um, and they will put it back together again with some type of melted metal, um, usually gold or silver or platinum or bronze even. And the philosophical thing behind it, not not even just the fact that it looks beautiful when you put it back together again, but the philosophical thing behind it is that the process of being made whole again, whole again, the healing process, it can be a beautiful thing that you were once broken before, but now you're able to use your brokenness to become this this whole creature, this whole piece of art once again. And in Ephesians 2.10, in the Bible, it says, for we are God's masterpiece. We are his pieces of art. And um, in the Bible, it also says that he is the potter and we are the clay. He made us. He knows what we are to look like. I'm not talking about physically. I'm talking about emotionally, mentally, spiritually. He knows what we are meant to look like. He knows the wholeness, wholeness, and that's H, I mean, W-H-O-L-E-N-E-S-S, the wholeness that we were made to look like, the wholeness we were made to have. And we have to be crushed. We have to be pressed a few times in order for that wholeness, the beauty that God meant for us to really have, or uh, not even that for, not even for the the beauty we were meant to have, but for the beauty that we already had all along to shine through. And so that is what I mean by that. And that is the meaning behind Kintsugi. Number three. I, th- I personally love this one. <laughs> People are not going to like a version of you that's better than the old you. People are not going to like a version of you that's better than the whole you. The old you. You know why? Because the old you, they were able to take advantage of. The old you, they knew that you would forgive them for everything that they did no matter how much it hurt you. The old you was always a yes person. You never said no because you never wanted to disappoint anybody. You never wanted to hurt anyone's feelings. The old you was easy to blame, was easy to put the blame on. The old you was always criticizing, was always criticizing yourself. You never felt good enough. You could never do something good enough. But the new you, the new you, the healed you, the one who is quote unquote woke, the one who is walking with God hand in hand with the Holy Spirit, the Trinity, the new you knows how to say no with assertiveness. And that means to be aggressive in a respective way. That That is literally what being assertive means. Being assertive means to be aggressive but in a respectful way and my girl Ashley actually talked about that recently on her podcast respect perspective with Ash make sure to tune in I'll put a link for her podcast below I love her so much she's my good friend and good sis she actually talked about this recently about putting boundaries a person who is healed knows how to put up boundaries 
And people aren't going to like that. People aren't going to like the fact that you're not a pushover anymore. People aren't going to like the fact that you respect yourself now, that you realize the error of your ways from your past and you've learned from them and you've grown from them and you know how to walk the walk and talk the talk. A lot of people aren't going to like that, but guess what? Those people who are like that were never meant to be in your life in the first place. Number four, this actually kind of connects to number three, but number four is the amount of people in your life will shrink. Your circle will get smaller and that's okay. This, I, oh, I learned this like a while ago. So I always thought that is like, that is like, oh my God, that is like these people that left my life or it's like, I'm not close with them anymore. That is like, I used to think that it was because of something I did. I must have did something wrong. There was something wrong with me, yada, yada, yada. And in some cases, there was something wrong with me. I had to do some healing work. And they probably picked up on that, and that is why they drifted away. Now, there's nothing wrong with the fact that you have to heal, but there is something wrong with the fact that you're holding on to people who should have been let go of a long time ago in your life. This goes for romantic relationships, platonic relationships, work relationships. This goes for... um, that church that you've been going to that you're questioning why you even still go to that church if you're still questioning why you're in a certain environment like why you're even still there then it's like then that is probably that is probably the time for you to go it's probably (laughs) it's probably the time for you to go and that goes for any relationship that you have in your life Number five, comfortability is so strong that it can make you want to stay in painful circumstances. I'm going to say that again. Comfortability is so strong that it can make you want to stay in painful circumstances. Now this I actually got from something that Jackie Hill Perry said. Jackie Hill Perry is one of my favorite people when it comes to theology and breaking down the word and her teaching the way she teaches is just is so powerful and is so eye-opening and it it is also very um it also like it it hits you it's it's very discerning it's very discerning and it's very confirming also because like she goes by the word And those are the type of people you need to listen to. People who go by the word, who don't try to like to whitewash it, beat around the bush. And it's like, no, they go by the word and what the word says and they break it down the way it's meant to be broken down. Those are the type of people you should be listening to when it comes to the Bible. And Jackie Hill Perry is definitely one of those people. Now, the specific video where she said this, I will link it below. I will make sure to link it below. I'm not going to leave y'all hanging because when I saw this video, I was just, whew, I was blown away. Now, the story that she had used in relation to this was in the story of Exodus with Moses and the people getting freed from captivity and and from being slaves and they make it to the desert and um, I'm kind of just like shortening up the explanation that she gave and what was in the Bible Um, if you want to again I'll link the video below to what she said and if you want to read the story on your own just read the book of Exodus like a part of Genesis like going into Exodus and you'll and you will see but pretty much they were in the desert and they was complaining there was hella complaining going on and it was even instances where they said that it's like oh we were better off in Egypt than to have to be out here in this desert and all this is that and stuff like they got so comfortable in their captivity in their captivity in them being slaves in them not having freedom of choice freedom in the way they think freedom and what to do for themselves to better themselves 
that it made them want to go back. It made them want to go. It, y'all, it made them want to go back to being slaves. Because God in the desert was having to teach them how to be dependent on him and him alone. To have faith. To be patient. To listen to the word of God. To be to to be a Christ follower, to be a Christian. And they 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 weren't willing to do that. Which is which is crazy. And to connect with that, I know that I know there's so many people that can relate to this, but I know there's times in our life where we wish that it was like, oh my God, like if I could go back to this, it was so much easier back then. Or to even go back to, um, to certain habits that we used to do, to go back to drinking, to go back to having sex with whoever I wanted to have sex with, to go back to partying, to go back to being a workaholic, to go back to the things that we became comfortable with because it was easy for us. Just because it's easy does not mean that it is good, okay? I'm going to say that again. Just because it's easy does not mean that it is good. And the last one, number six. Isolation is the enemy of community. Now, this is one that I am definitely still learning from personally because... um. It could be so easy easy to want to just kind of like break off and do your own thing. And when you become overwhelmed, it's like you just want to like shut everything out. Everything out and just be like, shut up. I need time by myself. Like, I, I just, I can't. Now, is it important to have time for yourself? Absolutely. It's important to have that time to like regenerate, to like relax yourself, like to take a break. But to isolate yourself, to cut off all type of form of communication from everybody, that is not healthy. And I say it's the enemy of community because community, um, whoever that be in your, whoever the people are in your community that you can go to for help, for guidance, that you trust them, um, that you're able to, to go to them without no judgment, the people who are active listeners, people who listen to you without wanting to just like give a response all the time or to give a quick, easy answer. You want community around you. You want people around you to help build you up and to help you on your healing journey, especially people who are still healing themselves. The one thing that um, my pastor at my now church, um, Bridge Church, Pastor James Roberson is my pastor. And one thing he told me is that the church is full of people who are helping lift up each other's burdens who are burdened themselves. And that's, and I thought that was so helpful because it shows that even in the midst of community, you will know that you're not alone in what you're going through. That is like what you're going through, you're not the only person going through it. But even in the midst of community, you're still going to have people who are willing to stand in the gap to be with you and meet you where you are. That is it for today's episode. I hope you gained some type of insight and learned some things that you can take away with you personally from this episode. Again, I want to mention that healing is not easy, but it is necessary. I will again link my friend Ashley's podcast down below, Perspective with Ash, and I will also link the video to Jackie Hill Perry's teaching down below. Make sure that you are subscribed and following this podcast on Anchor, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and Google Podcasts. Make sure that you're following me on Instagram at Kintsugi Talks Pod. That is K-I-N-T-S-U-G-I Talks Pod, all lowercase, no spaces in between on Instagram. 
and I will see you tomorrow, Thursday, for a story time episode. Until then, God bless.